Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Yes! Yes! You killed him! Shot him down like an animal! Shot him the back! Stay where you are, both of you. Don't move, Steed, or you'll be as dead as he is. Merlin, he, he got away. Yes, your friend wasn't feeling very brave, was he? He always was a disappointment. I've been looking forward to meeting you again, Steed. Pity Merlin got away, but at least I've got two of you. Go ahead. Shoot. It wouldn't be legal. So, you may sit down if you wish, but keep your hands up. The firing squad won't be long, and then, bang, bang. You won't have anything else to worry about, will you? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. So many women say, once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Because there's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water OMO. It solves Mrs. Sutherland's washing problems for her. Very dirty oil or grease marks. Yes. If you use cold water OMO, there's no trouble at all. It comes out very, very easily indeed. There's no washing problem too difficult for cold water OMO. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. Beautiful Jill St. John knows the value of the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Choose Lux to keep your skin soft and smooth. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 6, the final episode in this story, in which Emma Peel wakes up at last and John Steed manages to straighten out all the puzzling activities that have been taking place during the morning after. John Steed, Jimmy Mervyn, Jenny Thurston, and her driver Yates fell neatly into the trap Sergeant Hearn had set for them. They'd returned to the offices of the Poston Trading Company to find Mrs. Peel. Mrs. Peel was still there, all right, and still fast asleep. But Hearn and his men were there, too. Hearn had shot Yates as he was attempting a getaway. But Jimmy Mervyn was luckier and made his escape among a flurry of gunshots. Hearn's men had given chase, firing blindly, but Merlin had a good start and dodged in and out of alleyways, heading for the car park. At the same time, I must get to my car. That's the first thing. Not much further now. Merlin doubled back, tore down a side road, and into the car park. Once there, it was easy to conceal himself and wriggle his way to where his own car stood. He froze as voices approached. He went this way, headed into the car park. I don't think so. He went around the back, over there. Merlin dropped to the ground and squeezed himself under his car. He saw army boots approach, heard voices, foreign voices. We must not fail. If we do, it will not go well with us. He, he could have made for the other entrance and the exit over there. Merlin waited until the footsteps had died away and then scrambled from under the car, unlocked the door and sank with a sigh of relief into the driver's seat. He inserted the key in the ignition and then a thoughtful look came over his face. He reached back under the seat and withdrew a small suitcase marked J. Merlin. He opened it, peered inside, seemed pleased with what he saw, closed the case, and then made a decision. With a broad smile, he opened the car door and, carrying the case, weaved his way silently amongst the cars, heading back the way he'd come, back to the Poston Trading Company. <laughs> Ah! 
Back in those offices, Steed was doing a bit of deep thinking. Harold Courtney. What? What's that, Steed? What are you talking about, Steed? No, keep your hands up. The man you shot, Harold Courtney. I thought I knew the name. He was a member of the Nuclear Fission Committee. Atom bomb expert. Now, why should he stay on in the area? Curiosity? That, or he sensed something was wrong. The area cleared and fake troops move in. But what about the team who are dismantling the bomb? Dismantling it? Are they? <laughs> you cotton on fast, Steed. We're not taking the bomb apart. We're putting it together. What? You, you're building a bomb? It makes a sort of twisted sense, doesn't it, Jenny? The area is declared clear, everyone moves back in, and then... Then the government pays up. We make our demand, pay up, or else. And in the commission building, the brigadier was pacing to and fro in the cellar. Well, how's it going, Major? Nearly finished, sir. The crew are just putting the finishing touches to the installation. They'll screw the large metal plate into position as a cover, and then all is ready. Well, hurry it up, hurry it up. We're nearly all ready. And when we are... Yes. When we are, I shall personally issue the ultimatum. <laughs> I should like to see their faces when they hear how Brigadier Montague Henson has outwitted them. At last. <laughs> Jenny Furston had never been in such a frightening position, but she refused to be cowed by the burly sergeant who had a gun pointed at her and John Steed. Tell me something, sergeant. A purely professional question from a newswoman. Who exactly are you? We might say that we are all mercenaries. Quite cleverly directed mercenaries. The plan was so simple. We declared a state of emergency. They cleared the area to allow us to bring our apparatus in. They assisted us, in fact. Now, well, everyone believes we're heroes. That gives our demand more weight. What do you mean, more weight? This is a dummy run, Jenny. <laughs> you catch on fast, Steed. It took a long time to evacuate the area. A long time. And the authorities know that. I still don't understand. Once the bomb is installed and ready to trigger off, you'll sound the all clear. Isn't that right? Correct. The people come back, pouring back into their homes all over this area. And when they are here, every one of them home, that's when we tell them to pay up. We'll give them just 15 minutes to hand over 20 millions. And if they don't, you'll detonate the bomb? They'll pay up. They already know how long it took to clear the area. A lot longer than 15 minutes. 20 millions. That'll mean there'll be a cut for everyone. Not all equal, you understand. The brigadier will get the lion's share. The brigadier? A man of his standing involved in a thing like this? Why? Why and how? Peak. Anyway, that's what the other chaps say. Peak. Bitterness. Anger. He's been told he's going to be replaced, made redundant, by a computer. A machine. It's a lot for a man of his experience to swallow kicked out of the service to make room for a machine. Of course, the money's a big incentive, too. But it's the machine bit that really gets him. Oh, well, I think we've waited long enough. Come on, on your feet. We'll find them. I think we should make up your mind. I have. I don't suppose you've got any preference where your execution takes place? What? Why don't you get it over with? Outside, then. Quickly. Come along there. At that moment, several things happened at once. Steed stepped between Hearn and Jenny, Mrs. Peel woke up at last, and the door opened. Ooh, what's going on? Stay where you are! Hands up! No, no, no! no. What the devil? Ah! Mrs. Peel, wide awake in a second, took in the situation at a glance, shot forward, collared Hearn, and threw him across the room just as Jimmy Merlin appeared in the doorway with another gas capsule. Steed's warning came too late. The capsule spun out of Merlin's hand and broke on the floor, right under Mrs. Peel's nose. <coughs> Mrs. Peel gave a smile of triumph, appealed to Steed for approval, and never reached the end of the sentence. How is that, Steed? Did I help you out of a little... 
Sorry, sorry, Seed. I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I'd seen the last of you. I couldn't do that. Bad for business. You might have spit it around that I was unreliable. Besides, it seemed a shame not to put those capsules to good use. So you had more than one. You were intent on selling the exclusive rights to as many people as possible. Oh, you know me, Steed. Cautious. Do you blame me? You got more in there? Oh, yes, but... Hey, yeah, but... I'm confiscating them. Jenny, you stay here. Keep an eye on this room and don't go in for heaven's sake. Guard it here. Right. Where are you off to? The commission building. Oh, now, look here, Steve. Look, I've done my Boy Scout bit. Come on, Merlin. You gave me your word. Oh, that's before I knew you were intent on murder. My murder. I need you, Merlin. I'm depending on you. But you know me. I'm probably the most undependable person in the Western Hemisphere. You came back. I told you why. You didn't want me to spread rumors about you. I couldn't have done that if I were dead. So you saved my life for what? You're trying to blind me with semantics. All right. Point me towards the jaws of death. Let's get going. In the cellar of the commission building, Brigadier Hansen had finished all his preparations. Excellent. Excellent, Major. It'll take him more than an hour to cut through that lot, and they won't have that much time. All right. Let's clear up and get out of here. The men were all ready to leave the cellar when Steed and Merlin appeared at the top of the stairs. Just in time, it seems, Merlin. That's the one to start with. Take cover, men! Take cover! Open fire there, at the top of the stairs! Two or three more to blame up for days. <laughs> cover your face, Steve. There's enough gas down here to knock up. Right. Hey, listen. A short time later, back at the Poston Trading Co. offices... Well, what happened, Steve? Unless our friends walk in their sleep, it's all over, Jenny. I've got to get back with this story. Anyone coming with me? Uh, I suppose you'd better get out my handcuffs again, Steve. Jimmy, if I don't, will you promise me to stay out of trouble? You have my word as an honest man. Thanks, Steed. I won't forget this. Thanks a lot. Come on, Jenny. Let's get to know each other a little better. Bye, Steve. Bye, Steve. Goodbye. Oh, no. Au revoir. Mrs. Peel... Miss Peel. Oh. Oh. I feel as though I've slept for a week. Hello, Steve. Anything exciting happening yet? Uh, no, no, no. All peaceful. Come on. Let's get out of here. And with a vicious uppercut, Jimmy Anderson finishes trimming his whole hedge in just three hours, 11 minutes. Great work, Jimmy. Do you play any other sport? Yes, dominoes. You're looking pretty cool, Jimmy. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. So many women tell us that once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Women like Mrs. Clark of East London. This is certainly the one that I've stuck to. And it's all I get now. Yes, cold water OMO cleans best. Over a million housewives have proved it. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.